throw off. Do remember, when we start the show, this is not a competition, and some people is going to come st on stage and say what they have to say, say what they feel, and you, don't, you might not agree with them. So just show your love for all the poets that perform. Last time a couple poets performed, I didn't agree with some of the stuff that they were saying, but you still clap it up and show your love, because we're adults. All right, so this is not a competition. We're gonna start the show off like this. Um, we're gonna call out our first poet, and uh, this poet performed last month with us, and he goes by the name of Abraham. So put your hands together for Abraham. I got a question to ask. But if you're standing, you may want to sit down first. Think of this one. <clears throat> Where slavery was reversed. I want you to think about it. Reflect, and then take another look. What if that true oppression we went for so long? Suddenly on the other foot. I'm just trying to stimulate thought, but I don't think I'm saying anything you ain't already asked yourself. Hey, gotta feel like we gotta come up who we are. You probably went and mask yourself. See, if slavery was a verse, you wouldn't know names like Malcolm X or Dr. Martin Luther King, but see, that would actually be a good thing. Because they wouldn't have lost their lives fighting for our civil rights. Instead of being the whites that were in the fight, if there's no such thing as the KKK, then you wouldn't know victims like Emmett Till. Although many people don't know who we are still. We have his mother screaming to leave the casket you know, open so you can see what they did to a baby. If slavery was reversed, I dare any white kid to talk to a black lady. If slavery wasn't that far away if my grandmother's great grandmother was a slave and my grandmother's a great grandmother today. See, when I think about slavery and it being reversed, I can't help but think as a mulatto, I kind of have it the worst because even though I'm in the middle, I'm grouped more towards the minority. But the roles will switch, I'll be affiliated with the newly oppressed former majority. You follow me? And I can't help to think, would the hood be painted with white faces? And would all my niggas still be catching these court cases? And would it even be an issue with saying nigga? Because it means the word black, so if it was switched, there'd be no need to have to flip that. No matter how much things change, they stay the same. We went from being the descendants of kings to descendants of slaves. Prison, slight slavery. Same story, just a modern day tale. But if it was switched, would blacks still make up half the population of jails? Indicted on crack sales? Or would they be at a Fortune 500? Some young executive? Instead of catching three felonies consecutive? But you can't blame everything on oppression. You can't blame everything on our historic shortcomings. We wasn't always blindsided. A lot of stuff we saw coming. But the change starts with an army of one. You know how they say, one day, you shall overcome. Thank you. <laughs> Alright, about um this one is brand new. I ain't never performed this anyway yet, so if I mess it up, I mean just keep that in mind. Um about a month or so ago I was on a on a TV show called Live from Midtown and I did a performance and an interview and they kinda they asked me who I write for, you know, and I, I answered the question but I figured I'm a poet, why not write a, a poem about who I write for? So next time someone asks me that I can just Break down to it, you know. So, why don't y'all go ahead and ask me who I write for? I write for, I write for all the street scholars who never need a school because they're self educated. Gotta heal the pain so they self medicated. Never seeing 40 acres, so we make self reparations. It ain't stealing because they owe, and we here to collect that debt. We need to come together with the plan to unite and neglect and stay. I write for all those complaining about a 9 to 5 when you got single mothers like mine raising three kids between ages 9 to 5 and still working 9 to 5. So I'm working two jobs, working 12 to 8 in the morning. Busting the ass, making sure the kids got something to eat in the morning. It's for the next Malcolm X or Dr. Martin Luther King. Sitting in class somewhere off state in the bank. Mm. I know you're sitting in the class stuck behind them balls, but let these words shine through like the stars. It's for those working on the story of their life, but haven't yet wrote the preamble. I write so you can use my life as an example. So many have the truth on pause and are scared to play. It's at the tip of their tongues, yet they're scared to say it. Mm. So for them, I narrate it. Cops shooting us dead like something legal. I call them Terminex, how they exterminate our people. 50 shots should ring a bell. I write for Sean, the Genesis 6. I write for Amadou Diallo. I write for all the natural born leaders who yet to find their way. So for now, it's me you can follow. I write for the ignorant. Those who close mind understand what I spit. I still speak for the hell of it. And to those who enlighten, it's for you especially I'm writing. I write for the deaf. If you can't hear, you can still read what I wrote. I paint pictures so if you're blind, you can still see what I spoke. I write to give hope. Hope to those who may be struggling from day to day, but most of all, I write for those who may feel this way. 
just can't come up with the words to say. Thank you.